So many new wells, as you know, are disrupting lives all over again all across the country. Many people are concerned with the legacy issues or the long-term impacts to water and soil and public health. Many people worry about the tens of thousands of production pits that have been bulldozed with all sorts of toxic drilling muds and fracturing fluids. Many other fear what doesn't meet the eye the long-term impacts of injecting toxic fracturing fluids and diesel fuel into the earth to get the gas out, or the long-term impacts of both using enormous amounts of water to drill and pulling out enormous amounts of water in order to produce the gas, or the short and long-term impacts of disposing enormous amounts of salt water into deep injection wells. Today, the calls continue to flood in from every oil and gas producing state and beyond, British Columbia, Alberta, Australia, Ghana. People who live with oil and gas call to report they have cancer or lupus or asthma or that a child was born with a disability. They want to know if oil and gas is to blame. being able to be here with you and be in a room full of people who uh, share some of the same ideas and feelings and hopefully maybe we can uh, prevent some of the things that have happened to us from happening to people around the country and and uh, what I see here makes me pretty hopeful um, I'm gonna get right to it looking off the front porch of our house um, we farm raise hay on about 200 acres um, pretty nice spot but if you look close, you're going to see that uh, mixed in with the alfalfa and grass and the sagebrush, um, all the white spots you see out there and tan spots are production tanks and wellheads. We have 24 natural gas wells on our ranch, uh, some of them as close as 250 feet to our home. This goes to show the type of work that they do. They're going to be your good neighbors, they're going to provide jobs, they're going to be caring and professional. This is just west of our house. This is a production tank that holds condensates and produced water. Uh, the water is very high in VOCs there. Um, I owe you a dollar. <laughs> uh, what happened here was a truck driver backed up to empty produced water. Uh, forgot to unhook the hose from the tank when he pulled away and realized when he pulled the valve off the back of his truck that the easiest thing for him to do was to drive in circles until his truck was empty and then go home. Right behind the tank you can see a line of tall grass. That's our main irrigation canal that irrigates the whole place. Less than 35 feet away. I found this. I had to call them. I had to get the people out there to do their supposed cleanup, which was to bring in about 40 yards of road base and dump over the top of it. Standing before you today, or sitting before you today, as a victim and a sick person with a sick family as a result of natural gas drilling and exploration. But we are going, we are getting better since being forced to leave our home at the suggestion of our doctor and medical treatments. My family and I did live in Decatur, Texas in a quiet community called Allison until me and my family's dreams of peaceful happiness came to a screeching halt. We were told to leave our dream home immediately because of health effects of our entire family due to the oil and gas industry around us. My doctor said, and I quote, you will spend more time and money on hospitalization, chemotherapy, and morticians. This time, my daughter was having nosebleeds. There were mornings she would wake up in a puddle of blood, screaming around 6 a.m., a rash of bumps mainly on her face and arms, and coughing more than usual. During a 20-minute reading session, she chronically cleared her throat 11 times. It was so noticeable that her teacher questioned me about it.
on July 25th of 2010. I smelled a heavy odor while checking cattle and called TCEQ. They came out that night to find heavy emissions and no permit. They used the FLIR camera. The, the plumes were massive. The, investiga the investigator himself documented that he had dizziness and a sore throat while on site. And yet again, the Aruba workers told me over the short-term limits and found in my body. With my symptoms the way they were, well, they got far worse. So I went to an env environmental doctor to seek help in testing. My test results were horrible. I have 19 chemicals in my lungs. This is our home. The place where we feel safe, felt safe and secure. This is where we want to live, where we used to live, but not anymore. We were forced to move because of our health effects due to natural gas drilling and exploration. Dish, Texas is a very unique place. It consists of 11 compressor stations. Back to back, they look like pearls on a string. They are operated by, as you see, Atmos, Chesapeake, Crosstech, Enbridge, and Energy Transfer. DISH also has gas metering stations operated by three of those operators. And then it has gas wells in the Barnett Shale and condensates operated by Devon. And it has gas transmission pipelines. So sitting in the community of DISH are all of these sources of contamination. And how far do the people live from these units? Because the people have been reported odor events. They live 50 feet up to two miles. So the emissions have an impact out to two miles on an ongoing basis. The units at a compressor station and a gas metering station that release emissions into the air consist of compressor engines, compressor blowdowns, condensate tanks, storage tanks, truck loading racks, glycol dehydration units, amine units, separators, and fugitive emission sources. And I put these up there so those of you who may have one or more in your neighborhood could identify that these are potential sources of emissions into the air that are causing health impacts. Events reported by the people of DISH, 90% of the individuals surveyed reported experiencing odor events from once per day to 24 days per month. So here I've listed the health impacts associated with the sulfur smell, like burning eyes, headache, runny nose, asthma, and then the health effects associated with what they call the natural gas smell. Again, nausea, hypertension, indigestion, chronic sinus infections, headaches, and asthma. So we have recommendations for involvement of federal and state and local oil and gas, environmental, and health agencies. They need to document, compile, and evaluate odor events and associated community health symptoms. The community is doing a great job, but these agencies should be doing it as well. The agencies need to track community health impacts over time. This will, is a chronic exposure. It's not an acute exposure anymore, and the agencies should be tracking this. They need to increase tracking of operations, upsets, spills, releases, and permit violations of the oil and gas facilities so that they can relate them back to the health impacts being experienced by the communities and relate them back to specific incidents when the health impacts get worse, as Lisa described. They need to establish continuous monitoring of speciated toxic air emissions with data provided in real time. And if you talk to Calvin, he can tell you it was wonderful to get it, but he also did some separate monitoring and determined that the continuous monitoring systems were not adequately operating. There's always a downside to everything that looks positive. The agencies need to provide ongoing monitoring of drinking water quality and identify the sources of this groundwater contamination in the wells and pavilion, as well as water wells and dish and water wells in other communities that are over the shale gas development. They need to evaluate exposure of community members living in close proximity to the oil and gas facilities and their production. Here we had heard from two 
you will hear a lot of these stories today from audience members as well as speakers. And they need to provide appropriate medical care and intervention. That's usually where they just start pushing back and say, oh, we can't provide medical care for these people. We're not the medical care agency. Well, the Agency for Toxic Substance and Disease Registry is the medical care, and they can provide it to these communities. And then they need to define sources of contamination, pathways of exposure, and implement actions to reduce emissions and exposure to the communities that are so heavily impacted, particularly in the shale gas plays. Thank you. There we go. What, what she found was that there were 944 products that they were able to identify, but only 407, in other words, a little more than half, provided the name of the product. From these products, there was information that te her workers and her colleagues at TEDx could provide the names of 632 chemicals. This bar chart, uh, shows the number of chemicals that could cause health effects in each of 12 different health categories. Over 75% of the chemicals could cause irritation or damage to the eye, the skin, sensory organs, respiratory system, and the liver and gastrointestinal system that could happen upon immediate exposure and also have long-term chronic impacts. And a little over 50% of the chemicals can harm the brain, and the nervous system causing immediate to long-term irreversible damage. Continuing to the right, you see the immune system, the kidneys, the cardiovascular and blood system, cancer, mutagens, endocrine disruptors, and a column called other that can range from abnormal skeleton and other birth defects to outright death. Back to the results of her recent study, TEDx demonstrated that more than half of the ingredients being used to extract natural gas have not been revealed. Let's pause on that a second. So right now, what we've just learned from uh, Dr. Colburn is what she knows, that is, chemicals that are listed in some type of scientific literature. But one half of these chemicals have not been revealed. And when we look at the overall health effects of the chemicals already admittedly being used, there's no reason to think that dilution is a solution in, in the case of fracking. For many foods. reasons, natural gas has a long way to go before it can truly be called a clean energy. Thank you. <laughs>